Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, man. We're back, man. Happy Monday. Uh, about to get ready to watch this Crystal Palace Man City game at 4 o'clock. Uh, I do know, like, the time change here. So, instead of being 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's 4. So, it kind of sucks. I don't really like that, but it is what it is. And also, I did watch Manchester United. I just couldn't react to it because I wasn't really at home for the second half. I did watch, you know, how I said that. We watched the game. Cristiano, man. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say about Cristiano Ronaldo, man? A banger, first goal is a banger, second goal, good little sweat, you know, good little tap in, third goal, yeah, score for header, about time. But big game tomorrow against Athletic, Athletic Madrid, very, very looking forward to it, man, hopefully they get it done. But, we're back with who had the greatest season in football history, so we are going to react to it, we are going to see what it's talking about, appreciate the love for you guys do show with these, man, um, hopefully I am able to do more of these, I've been just busy with other content and, you know, just personal stuff, but... Let's just get started. Let's just get started. Cool. So, who had the greatest individual? Oh, damn, Soros. In the of the game. Let the countdown begin. Ten. Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry. And two to three. Scoring 24 goals in a Premier League season is no mean feat. Doing that while also providing 20 assists, well, that's just incredible. Arsenal didn't win the title in 2002 to three, but Henri did all he could to keep Arsenal in contention. 24 you know, goals Brent and 20 assists. God, Lee. 20 assists in the same campaign. Well, that's a hit. That's what made Henri so good. His rival for the golden boot at the time was Ruud van Nistelrooy, a superb poacher who came alive in the penalty area. But Henri didn't just convert chances, he created them too. The Frenchman was on fire throughout the campaign. He scored a stunning solo goal against Tottenham at Highbury and provided three assists for Freddie Jungberg on the final weekend, despite the fact he was battling Van Nistelrooy for the golden boot. That summed up Henri's selflessness, and he was rewarded for his incredible efforts with the PFA Player of the Year and FWA Footballer of the Year. That's what's up. Nine. Dixie Dean. Who the hell is this? To Damn. Football. Like that. What kind of football were they playing back then? <laughs> 1927, 1928. I couldn't even sing a person. They are probably playing freaking the, the fields or just, oh, uh, I already knew how, how, how like the fields were. Probably just muddy, not even, you know, properly, you know, treated right. They probably played with freaking, not, not even cleats. Yeah. Ago, let alone a hundred. It was definitely easy to score Look at that. in the 1920s than the 2020s. But that doesn't mean we should dismiss Dixie Dean's remarkable exploits. The Everton icon was one of the most prolific centre forwards English football has ever produced. His peak came in 1927 to 28, when Dean scored 60 goals in 39 first division. That's games. ridiculous. He scored five hat tricks and 14 braces. All in one league season. He can't raise a super, Superman punch that. Title that year, and Dean established himself as a regular starter for England. His record of 60 goals in an English league season still stands today, and will probably never be beaten. Yeah, I doubt that. Eight, Luis Suarez, 2013 to 40. Liverpool. Luis Suarez tried to leave Liverpool for Arsenal in 2013, but the Reds dug deep to keep him. Their refusal to budge was justified in spectacular fashion the following season. Suarez actually missed the start of the campaign because he was still serving a ban for biting Branislav Ivanovic. What the hell? All fans were concerned he might lack match sharpness when he returned. They needn't have worried. Suarez grabbed a brace against Sunderland in his first game back. Ooh. On New Year's Day, he scored his 20th goal of the Premier League. Oh, jeez, what a hit. Suarez was unplayable in 2013-14. to Brendan Rodgers' attacking tactics helped him. Defenders couldn't just focus on Suarez because they also had Raheem Sterling, Daniel Sturridge, and Philippe Coutinho to contend with. Liverpool narrowly missed out on the title, but Suarez couldn't have done much more. He ended the season with 31 goals in 33 league games, earning a big money move to Barcelona. Barcelona. Seven, Alfredo Di Stefano. He was supposed to be in FIFA, I thought. What's up with that? Cristiano Ronaldo came along. Alfredo Di Stefano was the greatest player in Real Madrid's history. The Argentine made Madrid what they are today. Before he arrived, they'd only won two league titles. By the time he left, Madrid had been crowned champions of Spain ten times and won five European caps. <laughs> Di Stefano was a model of consistency throughout his time in the famous white shirt. But his best season was probably 1956 to 57. Di Stefano scored 43 goals in 43 games. A goal every game. La Liga and the European Cup. 
that'll be impressive enough before you consider the fact that De Stefano was much more than a goal scorer. There were no reliable assist stats in those days, but it's clear the Argentine laid on numerous goals for teammates. Di Stefano was a complete footballer, and he demonstrated the full breadth of his talent in 56 to 57. Number six, Billy. Pele. Billy. to 62. Pele remains the only player in the history of the game to win three World Cups. Less is known about the Brazilian's club career, but it was just as impressive. In 1962, he inspired Santos to glory on three fronts: the Campeonato Brasileiro the Copa Libertadores and the Intercontinental Cup. South American seasons don't always align with European ones, but across 1961 and 1962, Pelé scored 110 goals in 75 matches. Get the hell out of hell. <laughs> okay, there's always like some rumor about Pelé talking about how like, like he's not like the all time goal. Like, goal. I think, I think Christian, I think just passed that this past weekend. They were saying that Pele stats don't really match up, stuff like that. I'm like, who knows? Like, who knows? Like, it probably does it. He probably does, but who knows? His best performances came in the Intercontinental Cup. Pele scored five goals in a two-legged tie against the great Benfica side of you. and Mario Coluna. Santos won 3-2 at home and 5-2 away. And Benfica's goalkeeper, Costa Pereira, explained what it was like to face Pele. I arrived hoping to stop a great man, but I went away convinced I'd been undone by someone who wasn't born <laughs> as the rest of us. 5. Ronaldo, no, 1996-97. To say Ronaldo burst onto the scene hey, that's Pele. an understatement. Oh, phenomeno really was a phenomenon in his early years. Just injuries. Many people argue he's the best teenage footballer of all time. Ronaldo turned 20 in September 1996, just a few months after he joined Barcelona from PSV. He only spent one season at the Camp Nou, but boy, what a season it was. The Brazilian scored 47 goals in 49 games in all competitions. Six of those came in the Copa del Rey and five in the Cup Winners' Cup, as Barca won both tournaments. It wasn't just the quantity of the goals, but the quality too. Ronaldo left his own manager with his... Oh yeah, get your ass off me, boy. A ...stunning solo strike against Compostela. Ugh. Bobby Robson couldn't believe what he'd seen. <laughs> there were also long-range strikes and unerring finishes. In 1996-97, to 97, the unstoppable Ronaldo could do absolutely everything. 4. Diego Maradona. Rest in peace. To 87. Rest in peace. Diego Maradona must have felt on top of the world at the start of the 86 to 87 season. He just inspired Argentina to World Cup glory in Mexico with the greatest tournament performance of all time. Now he had his eyes set on success at club level. Napoli had never won Serie A before Maradona joined the club in 1984. The drought was finally brought to an end after 61 years. In Diego's My man can't even walk up the stairs. Like, move! Like, get out the way! <laughs> Diego San Paolo. Maradona only scored 10 league goals in 86 to 87, but finding the net in Italy during that era was notoriously difficult. Reaching double figures was a real achievement. Besides, Maradona's brilliance can't be measured in numbers. Napoli weren't an Italian powerhouse, never mind a European one. Maradona dragged them to heights that would have seemed unimaginable a few years earlier. Naples exploded after the title triumph. Street parties went on for a week, and Maradona's face adorned numerous murals across oh, the they love him in Napoli. The newspaper summed up what the Argentine meant to Napoli. We have no mayor, houses, schools, buses, employment, and sanitation. But none of this matters because we have Maradona. Number three. Cristiano Ronaldo. 2014 to 15. Only Paco Hento has won more Champions Leagues than Cristiano Ronaldo, who's lifted the famous trophy on five occasions. Yet Ronaldo's best individual season didn't end with him as a Champions League winner. He didn't even win La Liga in 2014-15. But it's impossible to overlook his sensational showings that season. Ronaldo scored 48 goals in 35 La Liga matches. <laughs> if he played all 38 games, he surely would have broken the 50 goal mark. Yeah. In all competitions, CR7 found the net 61 times. His That's crazy. Time. Carlo Ancelotti's attack minded approach suited Ronaldo. He scored in both Classicos and bagged five goals in a 9 1 thrashing of Granada. Oof. Barcelona won the treble in 2014. Uh, that's why. 
inspired by the MSN trio. But none of Messi, Neymar, or Hey, Neymar. so what's going on regarding PSG? Like, I seen them booing, you know, Neymar and Messi, stuff like that. Listen, I know they probably don't really care about the league because they should win a league every year. I know that Champions League collapsed that. They shut them at Karim Benzema. But y'all booing Neymar and Messi and Bobby leave anyway. So, <laughs> like. Outscored Ronaldo in La Liga or the Champions League. Mbappe is staying. Gert Muller. Gert Muller. to 73. Gert Muller. Gert Muller was one of the most natural goal scorers the game has ever known. He was an out and out poacher. Sometimes you forgot he was playing. Then you saw the ball in the back of your net. Muller was part of the all conquering Bayern Munich team that won three European Look at that. In a row. Look at that. Uh, facial seconds. hair. His own individual apex came a little earlier in the decade. In 1972 to 3, Muller scored 66 goals in 49 appearances in all competitions. That's impressive as That's well. An average of 1.34 goals per game across an entire season. 36 of those goals came in the Bundesliga as Bayern won the title. Muller scored a hat trick on the opening day of the campaign and didn't look back from there. The legendary German scored a ridiculous 30 goals in other competitions, Damn. including 11 in six European Cup games. Bayern didn't even reach the semis, but Muller finished as the tournament's top scorer. Number one, oh, Lionel Messi, course. 2000. Oh, and this is the, the 91 goals well, per year. That 91 goals Messi was magnificent season in, season out at Barcelona. But his efforts in 2011 to 12 were extraordinary, even for him. This was Pep Guardiola's final campaign at the Camp Nou. It didn't finish with another La Liga or Champions League triumph, but Barcelona played some superb football and Messi was at the forefront. The Argentine became the first player in La Liga history to score 50 goals. He found the net 73 times in all competitions, setting a new European record that had existed since Gert Muller's 66 goals in 1972 to 3. The highlight was a remarkable five goal haul against Bayer Leverkusen. Mm. No player had scored five times in a Champions League game before. Not for the first time, Messi broke a new ground. There were records just about everywhere you looked. <laughs> five goals at the Camp Nou. That's crazy. Liga hat -tricks in a That's season. crazy. Messi's 2011 to 12 was the greatest individual season in football history. Goat shit. Goat shit, man. Anyway, hopefully I enjoyed the video, man. I definitely enjoyed it. Learning a lot, man. Terry, Thierry Henry, Messi, Ronaldo, Kurt Muller, was it David Dean, and a lot more, man. Hope you guys, like I say, enjoy it. Ronaldo. I can't forget about R9 Pele. Don't forget to like the video and sub as well. Come down below, guys. Start some reactions. We'll see you guys later.